I always say that. <gasps>it's Jessica and welcome to before they leave so this is a game that I found on itch.io under the Yuri jam for 2017 and usually I find a lot of good games through the Yuri jam or jams and game jams in general so I found this it looked really interesting to me and the topics or the general idea of this game is we're playing as a person who goes through depression but also through the fact that they have crushes and they're gonna be hanging out with their friends so all these things are gonna mix together before we get started if you guys would like to check the game yourself there's a link in the description also please check out the creator of this game I'll leave links to their stuff as well uh, so yeah let's get started a cascading wave of isolation fills Sam with thoughts of entire lifetimes of loneliness creeping in under the current but there was no reason for it not right now it didn't make any sense. Her brain didn't make any sense. Everything right her right now is wrong. She knows that, logically. Why? Crushing darkness surrounds her, exacerbated by the harsh fluorescent- Oh my god, lights! And the glare of the sun reflection- reflection off of everything. Sam closes her eyes. Why is it so goddamn bright, she thinks. Though not in so many words, but as feelings. Words won't fill her head. No, her mind is molasses. Why can't she be back in bed? The chattering noise around her wouldn't be ignored much longer, nor was she allowed to. Her friends would expect her to talk, or at least say a thing, or to join them somehow. Yeah, that's like, you know, like, it's it's very difficult, this kind of thing, especially if you're dealing with depression, because, like, I can't lie, like, I have it too, and, like, certain days, it's like, I don't want to talk to anyone, I just want to stay in bed, so I understand where Sam is coming from, but at the same time, Obviously, it's it's difficult to like deal with it and then there's certain days which are worse than um, others And it looks like this day for Sam is very terrible. She doesn't want to be here or be around people But she has to because she's with her friends and obviously you want to be with your friends, too But it's just like dealing with this stuff is gonna make it a lot more difficult to just even talk So I feel for her a Sympathetic voice interrupts. What do you think about Sam? Sam's placid pond that she puts so much effort into focusing on is ruined by a ripple. Eyeballs calling all over her. Sam raises her gaze to the voice. It's Haley. She looks beautiful, effortless, and rugged at the same time. They were both they were both on the girls' baseball team. Well, Sam used to be. Haley had more effort to stay friends with Sam after she'd quit. Sam appreciated the gesture, but something or nothing. Depression. Sam has depression, or some form of it that her therapist wrote on her file. Who the fuck cares what it is? Sam wants to go home and sleep. They had spent the day outside hanging out, talking about this or this and that, eating food and getting boba tea. Boba's really good. Sam toys with her leftover boba and the ice in her cup with the wide orange straw, replying. Oh. Nothing, actually. I'm just sleepy. I'm just- I'm a depressed idiot. You're beautiful. <laughs> I like how that's an option too. I like- like, I, yeah, I want to flirt with her because, uh, she, Haley seems like a nice girl, but like, it's- it's difficult to be honest about mental illness. I feel like more people are now doing it because it's more accepting, which surprises me. It's only accepting now. Um, so I feel like it's okay to be, you know, open about it but the dialogue is i'm i'm just a depressed idiot it's kind of like sad because it's like you're putting yourself down you really shouldn't but it's like yeah it's difficult to say i'll say it actually i want to see what happens i'm just a depressed idiot i oh i just been care i'm just thinking about how much you guys hang out with me even though i'm a depressed idiot the girls are stunned at sam's statement sam no we love you Katie puts her arm around Sam reflectively. The girls follow with all, yeah, and Hayes. Haley reaches her hand across the table to Sam, palm up. Sam, we're your friends, and you're, we're here, and you're here because you, we want you to be here with us. Sam is a bit overwhelmed by the affection, but feels a little better. Nothing feels genuine about this moment, and she feels numb, but a little better at the same time. Sam reaches for Haley's hand, who grips it. Sam, look at me. Sam complies. She feels like such an oaf. Here she is, sitting a good half foot or more above the others except Haley, slouching and being given this affection. She doesn't deserve any of this. She probably said what she did because she wanted attention. She's such a fake. Whoa, what? Guilt begins to creep in at Sam's throat. Haley continues, putting on her best soothing voice. Sam, we're your friends and we want you to have fun and have a good time. You know that, right? Have fun? 
This is exhausting. But yeah, it's fun. Sam guesses her to herself. Yeah, I guess. Sam looks away in shame. Katie tightens her grip on her, while Haley grips Sam's hand once more before withdrawing. Good. The table is quiet for a moment. Haley eyes Sam's empty cup. Hey Sam, do you want another boba? Sure. This is so sweet. The friends are so supportive because it's like it's, it's very difficult to deal with someone who has mental illness because like there's still a lot of things we don't know about it and uh, there's no, you know, real cure to it. So it's very difficult especially when the person is having like a very depressed episode or a very bad day with their mental illness is very difficult to like talk to them and I feel like a lot of people give up easily especially if the people who react like Sam is are just saying oh my life is worthless like why are you guys lying to me why are you hanging out with me blah 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 and all this stuff or like basically blaming themselves for everything I feel like a lot of people don't know how to deal with that and they actually like close a lot of people off like I've seen it happen to people I know and it's happened to me like they don't want to deal with me just because I'm feeling sad or stuff it sucks because like I, I try to be understanding at the same time like they don't understand what it's like but you shouldn't just like throw them away you know what I mean you shouldn't be like oh you, okay you deal it by yourself you should help like anyone with a mental illness they should have help because that's the way they're gonna get through it so I'm gonna say yes to Haley you could buy me another boba I like bobas <laughs> Uh, sure, I guess. Thanks. Haley gets up and stands- How tall is she, first of all? <laughs> Haley gets up and stands in, in line to order. K-pop fills the air with, while Hal's moving castle plays on a nearby flat panel screen in silence. This is totally like a boba shop. Because they're playing K-pop and then also Hal's moving castle. <laughs> Sam picks up the tray of fries on the table while her friends start talking about boys at school. Apparently there's someone that Julia and Emily have a crush on, but it's maybe problematic. Who cares? Nobody ever liked Sam like that, that to begin with. There were a few times where things got awkward with someone at school, but that was it. Someone pressed Katie about who she crushes on. Katie is Sam's childhood best friend. Katie's parents are Sam's good godparents, and she lived with Katie's family while her mom was abroad. Sam's mom is abroad a lot. Well, all the time. That's a secret! Katie teases, motioning her finger guns dramatically. The girls groan and pry more. Sam watches in amusement. She is vi she Since she is pretty, sure, Katie's crushes in anyone at school, but a collection of anime and video game characters. Oh my god, I love her already. <laughs> Sam and Katie had talked about crushes plenty of times growing up, whether it was a girl at school, some pop star, or a YouTuber, but Sam hadn't felt very strongly about someone since she was in middle school. At least, Sam likes to think she showed amb ambivalence about romance, though it couldn't be further from the truth. Katie probably knows Sam likes girls, but, she ha but hasn't said anything. They were practically sisters, but Sam never talked about herself when the subject is broached. She just had more fun getting swept up and talking with Katie about the, her newest waifu. <laughs> oh my god. Sam hasn't thought about the crushes lately. She doesn't want to. The mere thought of rejection is enough to stop it on its own tracks. She didn't need more anxiety and doubt about being worth someone's love like that. Oh, poor Sam. She does that plenty on her own. Should Sam tell the others about Katie's crush? Well, you know, Katie has a crush on me. What about that one girl? Sailor Jupiter, hey! <laughs> That's my crush too! Watch Haley instead. Oh, do we get to like pick who we want like, you know, crush on or whatever? I like Haley, but I also like Katie. Is that weird? I don't know. Could I say like Katie has a crush on me? No, I always say that. <gasps> oh no, I feel bad. I shouldn't have said that. I was just saying it as like a joke. Like, hey, she has a crush on me. Oh no. Katie's face is flushed red. Sam, who is both oblivious and joking, doesn't see Katie's reaction and laughs. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Sam waves her arm in the air like she's drunk, but more sleepy and tired, and a touch of depressed and drunk. The others kind of just look back and forth between Katie and Sam. Oh no! Oh, what did I do? I didn't mean it like that. I meant it as a joke. Oh no. But I do like Katie. Oh, I feel like shit. What did I do? Oh. They know that Katie has a uh, crush on Sam, but Sam has been pretty oblivious to it. Like, really oblivious. Bets were made, and that's how bad it was. Katie isn't aware of the bets, and it really didn't help that Katie refuses to make a move. She'd become somewhat compliant in a way. Is it because, like, she's not sure if Sam is gay? Or likes girls in, in general, I should say. Is that why she's not making a move? Because she's not sure if he, she's into her or something? Haley bet that Sam would never figure it out. Emily and the others have a bets on one year apart of each other, starting with the post-graduation. 
Eager to change the mood, Katie turns the conversation towards plans of the summer. Oh, I feel bad. I shouldn't have done that. Oh, no. Sam decides to tune out and stare outside. Sam stares in the same space for a good 10 seconds before she realizes she's been staring at Haley. Haley always kind of stuck out from the crowd. Straight A student, AP class load, shoe in for a number one academic and sports scholarship, but she was just really extra nice to Sam for some reason. The thought makes Sam feel guilty and worthless. She needs to stop. Even though it's annoying and frustrating, Haley and Katie have been dragging Sam out of the house every day for her benefit. Sam knows this, but at the same time, it didn't make sense. Why? Haley's so beautiful. Her sun-kissed skin complexion, her soft brown hair, clipped to the side of her head, uh, haphazardly with her bobby pins, and yet, despite the mess, it looks wild and perfect. Wearing a plump sports tank top and her shoulder flex ever so often to show the power hidden underneath. Lily spotted with freckles. She has a crush on Haley. She has a crush on Haley, but she doesn't realize that Katie likes her. Oh no, and then they're all friends. It's so awkward. Sam realizes that she's been staring far too intensely and darts her eyes back to whoever was talking. Haley comes back to the table with a receipt of 45 printed large uh, text at the top. A wave of apricot and mango washes over Sam. Is that Haley? She gives Sam a cheery smile. She watches as Haley seats herself and wonders if she should ask something. Ask Haley, ask where Haley's going to college, ask the group if they decide what they're doing after school, go back to picking your fries. Let's, maybe I should ask Haley? Ask Haley. Oh, I haven't really decided yet. I've gotten a few acceptance letters, but I was really hoping to go to UCLA. Hey, looks up in a way, her face mixed with excitement and anxiety. Oh, did she not get it? She nods and smiles. She hadn't been doing any planning for college, even though everyone's keep pushing her to do it. Katie was going to a famous fashion school in the city while commuti commuting from home. Oh my god, I know what it's like. I did that. I commuted from my college to home and sucked ass, man. Can I tell you that? And Sam figured it'd be problematic. A pragmatic of her to do something similar. Except, traveling away sounds nice. Katie looks at Sam with, a, some, with some surprise and redemption. This is the first time she'd heard this. How about you? Does Samantha Fiddler have any plans? There's a lit in Haley's voice as she teases her. She had set herself up like a fool, face now having to actually probably give an answer to the very question she had no desire to answer to begin with. Small talk sucks. Any plans that Sam may, may have had in the past were long dashed. The future, just she skipped school too many times and dropped out a number of classes. Depression had hit her too hard in junior year to bother trying to make up for the year for making it in her senior year. Her immediate goal was to catch up with the credits and at least graduate with her class. Be aloof, answer her directly, notice Katie who's been staring. <laughs> Can I notice Katie who's been staring? Sam looks at Katie, who she just noticed is staring somewhat invasively at her. Realizing that she hadn't really talked back to her, her any, about any of this, Sam had avoided the subject. Did you want to leave the Bay Area? Katie asks Sam, sounding a bit sensitive. Her tone takes Sam aback. Um, I don't know. I think so. I don't know. Sam isn't sure about how she feels. All she knows is that she is not happy with herself and how she feels overall. The last few years have been hell to get through, and she feels grateful for Katie and her family and Haley and everyone, but still, the feeling of failure doesn't clean easy. The feeling of leaving, fleeing somehow, somewhere away from herself if possible, is what she wants the most. Somewhere away from herself. She'd crawl out of her skin if it meant feeling unburdened. Just stop everything and get away. Well, which is it? I don't know! Sam responds to Katie a bit too loudly. She feels agitated and, fl and flushed. Katie's expression softens. Sam's less so. What does it matter to her? It's Sam's life, and if she has to deal with it, her brain 100% of the time, it sucks. She hates this. Number 45? Number 45? The clerk calls from behind the counter. Haley gets up to get her order and comes back, placing the boba drink in front of Sam gracefully. Sam cools off and thanks Haley, who nods. I think Katie just doesn't want her- well, because they didn't really mention, like, what they're gonna do after college, right? At least Sam hasn't, and I think she's upset because, like, Sam is her best friend and she has a crush on her and whatever, and it's like, she's gonna leave. Sam punctures her new boba tea with the oversized straw. Taking a sip, she closes her eyes and does her best to ignore the awkward tension at the table. Eager to shift the move, Julia asks a random hypothetical question. Well, Julia looks cute. If 90% of the world got submerged into water, what kind of mutation would you want to order to survive? 
What? <laughs> With global warming and the polar ice caps melting and shit, if you were to get a weird superpower or evolutionary trait to survive this new water world, what kind of thing would you want? Is this like the post-apocalyptic with people barely surviving, or has civilization somehow adapted? Um, let's say 2,000 years have passed since the flooding and any surviving civilization has bloomed into this unique thing, but people have genetically dis diversed. Cause like, you know, how humans are apparently 98% the same as each other or something and how it's weird compared to other animal species, humans have somehow been forced and diverse, uh, uh, diversified due to unknown reasons. Emily's cute too! All the girls are so cute in this game, look at them, they're so adorable. So it's post-post-apocalypse? Yeah. Okay, the group takes a moment before Sam breaks the silence. Fuck it, I'm a mermaid. <laughs> That's cute, I like that, I like that. The others approve enthusiastically. Ah, that's what I wanted! I mean, nothing's stopping you. Yeah, but it'd be boring if we all said mermaid. Okay, if you're a mermaid, what about some kind of amphibious adaption? Like, somewhere between mermaid and human? Where your skin is breathing- Where your skin and breathing has adapted or something? Are you saying you're a frog girl? No and yes. Sam's mood lifts a bit. The girls go around the table coming up with absurd details about how their mutations and evolutions would work, citing various science factors and embellishing upon knowledge of animal biology. Sam puts her best smile and cover as she the conversation spirals, laughing. Haley keeps glancing at Sam. Okay, what is this? What is it, Haley? Sam catches Haley's eye. Ooh, what's going on? What? Haley softly maintains eye contact. Sam stares back, but it's surprising. But but it is surprised by Haley's expression. A look of longing? No, that's not right. Concern? No, Sam has plenty of that. What? On the micro expression morphing into another, a sixth of a smile shifting into a tenth of sorrow, a twelfth of fear feeding into the fifth of hope, constantly changing until Sam finally breaks contact. What was that? That was more than a random stare goof, was it though? Katie declares that she would be the one to the last remaining true humans, but with a surprise twist of being a prince of a bird kingdom who has been kidnapped as an infant and kept in a glamour all her all their lives. <laughs> Sam puts the thought of it out of her mind. Awkward staring doesn't mean, actually mean anything. Could though. Haley stands up and excuses herself to go to the bathroom. A sense of exhaustion overwhelms Sam. It has been a long day, and it was time to go home. What should Sam do? Stick it out, leave. I wanna stay! My best to stay. I know that feeling of I would need to get the hell out of here, but like, sometimes it's not- it's beneficial to stay. I'm gonna stick it out. Sam decides she should stick, at, stick it out and wait for Haley to come back before leaving. Another half an hour passes. Finally, it's time to wrap things up and the group shuffles around the table and chair. Sam finishes up first and waits outside for the others. Sam thinks to herself about Haley's eye contact. Was she just being silly? Sam's unsure. But she doesn't feel motivated to try and investigate more. Katie comes out first, followed by the others. They just walk down the block and slowly part ways until it's just Sam and Katie. Finally, Katie and Sam come home, and Sam goes to fall into her bed. She naps on for an unknown amount of time until Katie wakes her up, walking into the bedroom with glasses of water. Hey Sam, that's sleepy, huh? Katie rests on one of the cups on the night counter. Mm-hmm. Sam mumbles in a reply, half awake. Okay, sleepyhead. Want me to turn off the lights? Mm. Okay, good night. Katie switches off the light and leaves the room, closing the door. A good long day ending. Hey! Thank you for playing before they leave. There are several endings. Which one did you get? Did Sam confess? Did Haley have- Oh, there's a confession? What? Did Haley have a moment with Sam in the restroom? Did nothing happen or worse? If you liked Sam and her story, you can follow what happens in her life and after high school and becoming a time travel in my webcomic, Time Filler. Oh yeah, that's right. The, the creator of this game actually has a comic for this for this game and the characters, I should say. So if you guys want to check out her comic, I'll leave it in, in the description, but I feel like I should get the other endings. What the heck? Let's start with Haley, okay? You're beautiful. Haley, have I ever told you you're beautiful? Haley and the whole group is completely shocked, but Haley is the most. This isn't just some plain compliment, teasing or otherwise. Sam had just said in the very clear, forward kind of way. 
Sam is also not really a feeling of giving a shit about in inhibitations at the moment. Oh no! And then Katie! Sam feels Katie possibly more surprised than anyone in the group, and that's because she's right next to her. Sam's not looking at Katie, she's looking at Haley. Uh, thank you? Thanks, Sam, I appreciate it. You're gorgeous too. Haley? I have a crush on you for a really long time. Oh my god! And I want to ask you out. You've been on my mind a lot and I want you. Will you have me? The group, and quite frankly at this point, the entire cafe is stunned into silence. Everyone at the ed Everyone's at the edge of their seats. Sam, I... Sam... Haley? Sam... Sam... Sam? Sam is shaken awake. She's been dreaming. It was only a dream. Jesus Christ, damn it, I thought it was real. <laughs> God damn it. The harsh fluorescent light smell of fried food, overly sweet drinks of the sound of some Asian pop song fills Sam's senses at all at once. It's overwhelming. God, why was she awake? And her neck aches too. The voice next to her speaks up. Sam? S Sam, you were mumbling in your sleep. We wanted to let you sleep since you, you conked out of it so quickly, but thought you might you want to wake up instead of sleeping and talking in public. It was pretty funny. Sam was barely awake enough to feel embarrassed, so only barely. It wasn't the first time. Sam, do you want another boba tea? It might help you wake up. Okay, I'm gonna try to get a try to us to get us a confection with Haley, okay? Okay, so we're gonna say we haven't thought about college and stuff with that. Not really. Oh, Haley is aware that Sam's class credit situation, but wondered if Sam had any particular ambition she wanted to pursue. Well, maybe the depression was just too much to even think of that way at all. She'd done her share of reading on depression, but still felt a an alien to her. She wanted to be supported and a good friend, but she knew that she had to focus on herself. With school and leaving home for college, Katie would be always be there, at least, well, in theory. Sam felt suddenly weight drop on her, like she had disappointed Haley. It wasn't her fault, but she wasn't going to a fancy college fully paid. Well, it was, but it wasn't. But fuck you. The feeling hurt Sam. It felt irrational. Sam felt her stomach twist as Haley gets up to her boba tea. Why did Sam tell her that she could go for another? Why? Fucking why? Shit, fuck, shit, fuck, 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 fuck. Sam's depression decides to kick up her anxiety as Haley hits to the counter. Oh no! Hey Haley, calm no, let's calm down. First of all, I know that feeling. Calm down, let's calm down. S Sam calms herself down. Haley didn't even say anything. It's all in your head. Haley comes back to the table and places the newly sealed boba tea gracefully in front of Sam, taking her seat. Thanks, Haley. Sam musters the best smile her depressed butt can. Haley smiles back with her eyes. Emily talks about her new favorite anime and some new smartphone dating sims. It's a yaoi game. Sam listens to the vague interest. It sounds a bit absurd and maybe too much to upkeep. Sam's phone is in a few ge generations back, though, and probably can't play it. I keep seeing fan art of it on Tumblr. I wonder what it was. Yeah, it's dominant. Pretty fun because you, you kind of interact with the characters like it's a messenger app. There are a bunch of in endings, too. <laughs> oh god, <laughs> are you talking about Mystic Messenger? <laughs> Julia plays it too? Sam wonders if she's behind the times. Staying home and skipping school does not have effect. Katie takes Sam's hand under the table and rubs it with her thumb comfortingly. What does Sam do? Notice Katie. Sam is a little surprised by the gesture and glances at Katie who was, ta who was talking to the others. Katie must have felt that Sam needed some emotional support in that moment, or Katie just wants to hold Sa onto Sam's hand. I think it's both. It's unclear, but she lets Katie continue to do, adjusting her own hand to hold Katie's. Sam had begun living with Katie since she was 14 or so. Her mother took a new, on a new job that requires her to be abroad. At first, she'd come back to stay for a week at t for weeks at a time, but eventually she stopped coming back, and Sam stopped bothering her. Oh, that's horrible. Katie and her family remained Sam's only emotional support, and at times this meant she felt like a burden. Katie and her parents would violently disagree and with such a calm, but it, it's how Sam would feel sometimes. There's Sam's godparents, and she herself had grown up with Katie her entire life. Sam's parents have never had other kids, but Sam never felt like she needed more than Katie and her siblings anyways. As far as Sam's concerned, Katie is her sister. She felt some comfort in this, some of her anxiety and tension relief. Katie knows that Sam can feel the exhaustion when she's out like this. What does Sam do? Look around! Go home! How about we look around? Haley keeps glancing at Sam, Sam catching her eye. Sam works through her milk tea, keeping her eyes averted from any further eye contact. What was that? Did she just imagine it? Sam stealing glances up and back up and Haley catches her. I need to go to the restroom. Katie and Julia stand up for Sam to get out. I'll come with you. Oh no! Oh, is this a good confession? 
Haley follows Sam into the restroom and the door closes behind them. It appears no one else is in the restroom. Sam walks to the furthest end of the faucet counter and turns around to see Haley, with a few footsteps behind her. Um, Sam finds her breath shaking. It's unexpected. She feels nervous for some reason. Why? Sam, um, there's- Sam's eyes decide to intensely focus on the wet spot on the restroom counter. A bit of sauce on your face. Oh, thanks. Sam hurriedly looks to the mirror and washes away the mark. The mirror is huge, and she and she can see herself and Haley standing in the restroom alone. Sam doesn't look away. Haley looks at Sam's reflection. I kind of miss us hanging out more. Don't you miss basketball? I could talk to the coach to have you back, wouldn't- No, I- Sam takes a moment f to form her thoughts. I can't- Yeah, being on the team was fun, but I- The words will come out. Okay. Haley sounds defeated. Sam stares at the bottom of the edge of her reflection, while Haley turns to lean on the counter. The restroom for fluorescent lights hums as the two stand silently. Thank her, use the restroom. Or you'd be like awkwardly, hey, I'm gonna go pee now. <laughs> no, I'm gonna say thank you. I don't think I told you thank you for coming and hanging out with me all this time. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, you know. What? Of course I want to hang out with you, and you're not about to stop me either. I'm your friend, and you don't need to say thanks. Haley feigns feelings insulted and steps closer to Sam. Her voice softens. Sam. Sam looks up and sees the reflection that Haley is looking at her directly, so she turns to her. Sam is surprised by Haley's expression, a look of both mirth and anxiety. She never knew her for anxiety. Haley's eyes twitch around, searching all over Sam's face. She takes a few audible breaths through her nose. Haley takes Sam's limp hands into her own. Sam, you are the one of the kindest, bravest, most beautiful people I know. I care about you, okay? Haley speaks to Sam in a soft, hushed tone. Sam looks down, flushed. Everything she is saying sounds wrong. Her? Kind? Brave? Beautiful? Those words feel hollow. She wants to tell herself Haley's being honest, but... Haley brings her hands to Sam's face, palms holding to each of her cheeks. Sam could feel Haley's hands trembling. Why was the- why was she trembling? Sam should be trembling. Sam feels like she's on the outside of her own body, not feeling, just watching. There's nothing to do but stand there. Haley pulls Sam's face towards her lightly, and Sam's body complies. She leans up, in one hand clearing away Sam's bangs, kissing her forehead. Ah. They stand there for a good moment, with Haley kissing her forehead a few, few more times. Sam's face begins to flush a little, as an intense feeling of sorrow fills her. The pain shoots its way from a large, empty darkness. Emotions begin to seal their way through Sam, then it stops. Haley puts Sam into a tight hug, as she lets herself feel Haley's grip, her touch, and lets her clenched chest relax into Haley's shape. A minute more passes, a sense of time is unclear. Haley finally lets go. Sam looks at Haley, and they both share a look of relaxed intimacy. We should go back to the others. Haley's chipper voice contrasts the mellow moment they had just shared. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. Sam finds her voice relax, with the slightest hint of wanting a moment to last a little bit longer. Oh, wait! Haley stops as Sam passes her. Sam starts to turn around, but Haley stops her, gripping her shoulders. One second. Sam feels Haley pull her hair back and moving it around. Sam glances towards the mirror to see what the hell she was doing. Just as she does, Haley lets go, and Sam sees that she had put her hair in a ponytail. A high one, in fact. It looks really kind of cute. Aww. Sam's face feels a bit naked without her hair flanking her cheeks, but maybe this is what she needs, some kind of bold vulnerability. Sam turns around to Haley, who is smiling quite a bit. Yes, much better. That's the Sam I know. Aww, that's sweet. Haley opens the door for Sam, and they return to brightly co colored walls on the milk tea cafe, joining the others at the table. Intimate ending. Hey. Okay, I'm gonna try one more time, but this time with Katie, so we can get some sort of thing out here. Sailor Jupiter. Everyone but Katie and Sam. Ooh, the group who's in unison. Their reaction stumps Sam a bit. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Haley probably chimes in. I'm more of a Sailor Uranus girl. <laughs> Katie bursts, bursts out laughing. Sam and Haley look confused. Uranus? <laughs> What? I mean, isn't that how you pronounce it? You're supposed to say your Uranus. I mean, that just sounds like urine, though. Either way, you can't win. <laughs> anyway, she's my favorite. Her and Mars. Katie, you should cosplay as Neptune. What? Because my hair is blue? Everyone looks at each other for a moment. Well, yeah. Pfft. Katie rolls her eyes. 
Katie turns to the conversation to her favorite animes being aired at the moment, but Sam was still on what Haley said. She might be really good at Haruka if she wanted to cosplay as her, though Sam wasn't sure that Haley would be into that. Katie starts getting excited about something, and Sam realizes that she's been imagining Haley as Sailor Uranus instead of paying attention. Part of Sam feels bad for zoning out and not participating in the conversation, but honestly, this is part of the course. No one really expects more from Sam. She just feels more comfortable like this. No one's asking questions, no one's needing answers. Just being there was hard enough. Alright, so we learned that Katie is going to a fashion school. Sam is pretty sure that she already networked with half the faculty by this point. You mean like college? Or a job I want? Whatever. The girls think for a moment. Katie, meanwhile, jumps the table, spelling out F-I-D-M over and over. <laughs> She's so excited about going to school, it's cute. I was thinking over head to, down to UCLA, honestly. Haley almost sounds disheartened but excited. What happens if we go home? Sam and Katie leave before Haley comes back, with Katie telling the others that to tell sor to tell Haley that they're sorry, but Sam's not feeling well. Julie and Emily agree not and tell Sam that they, they hope she feels better. Once Sam and Katie arrive home, Sam heads to their bedroom, sliding under a large comforter, hoping for the sleep to make her exhaustion and darkness to go away. When she's done, she feels done in more than one way. What did it matter anyways? In preceding days, Sam skipped school more often, locking herself away in her bedroom, and Haley eventually stopped coming by to pull Sam out of her house. Eventually, everyone but Katie stops. What? Graduation would be the last time Sam sees Haley. Depression ending. What the hell? That's messed up! They stopped- Helping her? Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna finish with this game, but that was awful. That they just left her like that, the ending, just because she wanted to go home because she wasn't feeling well. I mean, at least we had Katie, but still, I didn't I didn't think like Haley would just straight up be like, "Hey, I'm not talking to you anymore. Helping you? That's horrible." But um, this this game was very interesting, taking the fact of uh, the theme of depression and stuff like that. And I think it's really cool that uh, the creator has a comic for this game. So if you guys would like to try out the game yourself, once again, like I said, there's a link in the description. Please check out their links, also their comic of this game uh, and their characters since the girl, Sam, has time travel powers after high school. So that's pretty cool. I really like this game. I like the art style. I like the, the story and how, how well the game handled the feeling of having depression because I feel like a lot of games misinterpret a lot of mental illnesses or what it's like to have mental illnesses and how it affects people around you. So I, I feel like this game came pretty close to like um, portraying it in a more positive and more accurate way rather than oh they're just sad and that's it. Like they, I like how uh, it's included of anxiety as well and like the thought process of um, Sam thinking that she's doing everything horribly wrong but in reality she's not doing anything wrong to begin with but i like it and then i like the elements of like um and i like the elements of having crushes on your friend and dealing with that it's very awkward especially between katie and Haley. that's so awkward but i i do appreciate this game a lot if you guys enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to join the companions. And if you'd like to help support the channel on Patreon, there's a link in the description. You got early access to videos, videos for Patreon only, the Discord server to come talk to me and a bunch of other stuff as well. Or you can support the channel for free with gawkbox.com slash a girl in a game. You can tip the channel whatever amount uh, is given there and uh, you support the channel for free, completely free. All you have to do is just make an account. And I really appreciate if you guys used it so I can keep uh, this channel going without any problems. Problems, like the problems I've been having recently. Please let me know in the comments what you guys thought about this game and like I said check out all the creators links and stuff and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye! I can't do anything after all! Ah! Oh my god! No! Forward or develop another character. Video game deaths can be tragic. Here are six sad character deaths from video games. Roman, Grand Theft Auto 4.